All right, everybody, the Seahawks are not done today. The Seahawks are not yet done. They are making yet another signing, another veteran player, another free agent is being brought in here, and it's another guy that we've been talking about for several days now because the Seahawks did meet with him last week, and this one makes a decent amount of sense. There's a uh, connection. There's a uh, connection with Hankins and our new defensive coordinator from Dallas, uh, there's a something of a need on this roster, I would say, at least at the position, and we made it happen. Former Cowboy and former Giant, among a few other teams, I believe, as well, like the Raiders, nose tackle Jonathan Hankins expected to sign with the Seahawks. The Cowboys wanted to keep him, but the Seahawks offered a little more money, so this is going to be probably a little bit more than a typical veteran minimum contract if there was at least a little bit of a bidding war, although we all know that Dallas doesn't really want to spend any money, so who knows what they offered. But Jonathan Hankins expected to sign with the Seattle Seahawks, and he fills, I'm not going to call it a gaping need, but he does fill a little bit of a need on that defensive line. Now, we've spoken about Jonathan Hankins at some length previously, but uh, just to kind of reiterate quickly what he is, he is kind of the definition of a true nose tackle. He's bigger than the average defensive lineman. I think that he used to be much bigger than he is now, actually. He's definitely in the latter part of his career. He's about to turn 32, and his days of being like a really good player are long, long in the rearview mirror, but... Still a capable player, still a capable piece. He's been uh, he's been around, man. He's been around. He's been on, like I said, the Giants. He spent a year on the Colts, Raiders, Cowboys. He's uh, he's definitely been around, and this is not a superstar level signing at all. But what he is is somebody who can fill in with a good amount of capability on that defensive line, and for a team that I thought might be looking for a little bit of help on that defensive line in some capacity, Hankins makes a good deal of sense. He is coming off a pretty impressive year last year for the Cowboys where he had three sacks, which, I mean, that's more sacks than he's had in a long time, right? Like the last time he had a three-sack season was 2016, and over the last, uh, what would that be, five years previous to 2023, he had a total of two and a half sacks. So, I wouldn't count on him being able to do that again. That's a little bit of an aberration. But what he does provide is a big body in the middle to hold up. Now, it is worth noting that PFF does not like this guy. They have never liked this guy. They have never appreciated what he brought to the table until you go all the way back to the first several years of his career, I think. So if you go through Hankins' PFF page, they just, they don't care for him. Even this most recent year where he had a kind of a resurgence with the three sacks, they didn't like him. And if you go back further and further, You'll just find mostly bad scores here. So don't look to PFF to make yourself feel good about this signing. You got to go back pretty far to 2017 to find a season where he was actually graded well. But he's somebody who can offer some depth, which is key, which is important here. Um, you can see that like last year, he played about 350 snaps. The year before, he played 236. A year before those, he was playing a lot more. That was in his prime, so I wouldn't count on that. But could you count on Jonathan Hankins to give you about 300 snaps at nose tackle? I would think so. I think that would work. 300, 350. I think he can gut that out. He's um, I th He should have enough left in the tank for that. So, yeah, Jonathan Hankins is your new Seattle Seahawk. And to me, he basically sews things up on the defensive line. Because when you take a look at this defensive line now, with Leonard Williams and Draymond Jones and Jaron Reed starting... And then coming off the bench, you have Morris, Young, and Adams. And then Hankins is kind of your third nose tackle. He'll probably end up jumping Cameron Young on the depth chart when all is said and done here. Um, I, I think you can make this work. Because Reed is an undersized nose tackle. He's going to be able to bump over and play some snaps as a defensive end. So that will allow Hankins and Young more opportunities to get on the field. And it'll also probably squeeze Miles Adams to where he barely gets to play at all. So he's not even really... A concern at this point. So I took the yellow tag off of Adams because at this point we're going to need so little from him. He's more than qualified to fill the little role we'll give him. So yeah, Miles Adams no longer a concern at this point to me in the rotation. Although if we do want to upgrade to like a Mario Edwards, that would be, I think, relatively smart if we can afford it. So yeah, I think this takes care of the defensive line. So now the only thing on defense that I'm really, I don't want to say alarmed by, 
but wanting to improve on would be the depth at inside linebacker. And then we just basically need to take care of, of course, left guard, maybe another tight end, although I don't think that's necessary. Maybe a little bit of help at running back, although, again, not necessary. And we're pretty much ready to tackle the draft in a fair, balanced, and value-driven manner. All right, so let me know what you think down below. Jonathan Hankins, new Seattle Seahawk. Um, I, I know that it's uh, not a big signing, but it is a signing that I think is of note. I think it's a signing that means something, and I do think he has an impact that he will have on this season. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks. We'll find out about the contract later.